So this is it. We've made it to the end of the year. So today I'm gonna give you my top 10 favorite TV shows of 2022. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your favorite TV shows of 2022 or if there's a TV show I missed that you think I'd like, let me know about it down below in the comment section. And when it comes to television, there's way more TV shows than I could possibly watch. Even something like The Boys, which I watched in the past, I didn't watch the new season. It just didn't happen this year. Also, over on Patreon, there is a companion video to this with my picks for the most disappointing TV shows of 2022. You can gain access to that video and hundreds more by joining on Patreon at any level. For under $23, you can get all of the exclusives in 2023. Like this year alone, I did over 40 exclusive live streams as well as 20 edited exclusive videos over on Patreon. The link down below has more information and let's get started. Kicking things off, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Now, I did not like Star Trek Discovery or Star Trek Picard, so I was kind of losing all faith in these new Star Trek shows, but the one that kind of had my attention that I had a little bit hope that it could turn out okay was Star Trek Strange New Worlds, and it's kind of restoring just a little bit of my faith and hope for future Star Trek projects, and it did it by kind of going back to the original formula and telling stories about the Enterprise going to strange new worlds, having weekly new adventures, and just kind of recapturing what made the original Star Trek show and Next Generation so good. Another really strong point here is Captain Pike in the lead. I just love the personality, his leadership style, the way that he relates to his crew, that he's just a real solid lead for the show. I don't think it's a total home run. There's a couple dud episodes in there. There's a couple ways in which they over-focus and zoom in on like the love life of certain characters where you're like, okay, this is a weird direction to take things. But overall, a much, a gigantic improvement over everything else Star Trek that has been putting out recently. Number nine, Cobra Kai season four. Now, this is one of my favorite shows running right now. It's so watchable. It's so bingeable because it's a combination of lively characters, solid humor, great action, and lots of melodrama and soap opera-y stuff to just kind of suck you in. This wasn't one of my favorite seasons. I felt it tried to do a few too many things, lost some of the focus on the teenagers in light of all this corporate espionage via martial arts stuff kind of going on with the plot line. But at the end of the day, it still has all the stuff that I love about this show with the cool fights, great characters, especially like Chosen coming in to like spice things up a little bit. Terry Silver's a great villain who's just so mischievous. He's a physical threat as well as a mastermind. So it has all the stuff that I love about the show. It builds to this big, gigantic finale. At the same time, it doesn't feel quite as fresh as it did before. It's getting a little bit over the top and just how outlandish some of this stuff is doesn't change the fact I still thoroughly enjoy this show. Next up, Peacemaker. When they announced this series before the Suicide Squad even came out, kind of made me feel like, wow, they must have a lot of faith in the Suicide Squad. And then I watched the Suicide Squad and, and I hated Peacemaker and I was very confused as to how they were gonna try and make a show about such a despicable character that betrayed the team. And somehow, James Gunn, is able to take this ridiculous over-the-top character who is written to be someone that you hated in the Suicide Squad and take the exact reason that you hated him in the Suicide Squad and use that to discover his humanity in his TV show and make him sympathetic and make him someone that you're actually rooting for coming out of an irredeemable act in what he did in the Suicide Squad. Add to that, James Gunn is just so good with these ensembles of weird, broken people and being able to find the thing that's relatable 
with this insane over-the-top person or group of people. In which case, you have this show that it has aliens, it has gigantic, wacky humor, his shock humor, but it also has so much heart to it. Number seven, Barry. Now, I am brand new to this show. My buddy Cody Leach introduced it to me when he was in town for Fantastic Fest. And then over the next month, my wife and I kind of binged through the entire show and caught up with it. And I, I just thought it, the show as a whole was just this really fun blend of broken assassin combined with Hollywood culture. Two things that really don't go together whatsoever. And somehow Bill Hader is able to find the bridge between them, link them together and just make it so compelling and interesting and find a way to take a hitman and use his journey into pursuing acting to really do this study of PTSD and kind of like what James Gunn's able to do, find the humanity in these insane situations. This latest season kind of took everyone to these dark, dark places by, by stripping away all the successes that they had in the past, taking away so much of what kind of was holding them together the last few seasons and just plays out this very dark version of things that just escalates it. All I can say was um, I thoroughly enjoyed the journey of Barry seasons one through four this year. Then we have Reacher. Now, when I first heard about this series, I kind of was nervous it was going to be a mid-tier adaptation with not a lot of heart and soul, soul poured into it. Um... I wasn't crazy about either one of the Jack Reacher movies. Tom Cruise was just very miscast in that specific role. I have read the book that this season was based off of, and I wasn't crazy about it. And then I watched the show, and I thoroughly enjoyed it and thought the show was much better than the book that it was based off of, where it's just like a good old-fashioned throwback action thriller but as kind of this 10 hour journey throughout all the episodes and that served the narrative where you got to spend time with the characters in the town and let the mystery unfold, have opportunities for big action sequences in every episode. So it just kind of delivered everything that I wanted and had a very bingeable kind of feel to it. Another fun thing about this one is finally Alan Richardson getting his own franchise. This is a guy that I've been paying attention to to some extent ever since he was Aquaman on Smallville. Finally, he's getting it with Reacher and he just knocks it out of the park. Just on a physical level, he looks like this gigantic tank, the way that Jack Reacher is supposed to be. That's a defining characteristic of the character. I thoroughly enjoyed the first season and I can't wait for season two. With that said, here's a few of my honorable mentions for the year. First up will be the Marvel special presentations. Since these aren't actual shows, I didn't feel like I could include them in my top 10, but they were television special presentations. And I thought both Werewolf by Night, as well as the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, were better than the actual TV shows that Marvel put out this year, as well as last year with Werewolf by Night. It was something fresh, new, and different. And then with the holiday special, it just captured the weird, fun family relationship of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Along these same lines, Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, another Disney Plus kind of exclusive. It's a series of little 10 or 15 minute shorts, but I thought this was a very cool show that provided an opportunity to look at certain characters when they were younger. I don't need a show for that. I don't need a movie for it, but I enjoy getting these little shorts that give me those glimpses. Then we have Tulsa King. This is the new TV show starring Sylvester Stallone, and I've been loving this show. I love that I'm getting a weekly new Stallone project, and so this one has been a ton of fun. But the season isn't over with yet. So I don't feel like I concluded in my top 10 when I don't know if they're going to be able to land the ship, if it's going to fall apart in the finale. So I absolutely wanted to talk about it because it is one of my favorite things of the year. But without getting to see how it ends, I don't feel like I can include it in the main list. Along those exact same lines, Yellowstone, 
After starting watching Tulsa King, I was like, hey, this is Taylor Sheridan. He has another TV show, doesn't he? Like with Kevin Costner or something like that. And started watching through Yellowstone. And my wife and I have binged through seasons one through four, which were fully available. And then we've started season five, but we've only watched just a little bit of it. So once again, because I haven't seen uh, the whole season. I don't feel like it can include it in the main list. So we've been eating this show up. Final one on here is Westworld. This isn't a top 10 show for me, but I thought it was a huge improvement over the previous two seasons. They kind of course corrected with this new season by doing something so wild, wacky, wild, and crazy and taking it to such a hard extreme level that it kind of won me back to the show. And then as soon as I was won back, they canceled it. I definitely still had some issues with it. So it's not top 10 material, but a nice return to form. All right, let's get to our top five. Number five, Stranger Things for another one of my favorite shows currently running. We had to wait several years to finally get a new season and they made it way bigger than ever before. And it is just astounding to me that we have shows that are this big and produced at this level to where when you get into the final two episodes, when you get to volume two, it is just this massive epic showdown with incredible production design, incredible villain spectacle, all of this stuff, helicopter crashes, explosions, massive sets, all of it absolutely convincing. And it's just a television show. I would say that was a little bit of a problem with the season in the first half, where because it's so big and there's so many characters, certain plot lines are a lot more compelling than other ones. It felt a little bit scattered. You lost a little bit of the magic of the people being together. But boy, does it come back together and pay off really nicely when you get to the back half of the season. And I had a cool opportunity for Stranger Things Day at the beginning of November. They showed volume two in theaters across the country. And I was actually the host here in Austin, which was a real neat little opportunity. We had a cosplay competition, a trivia competition. It was it was super cool. And so I have very fond memories of volume two of this. Season. In fourth place, The Terminal List, a book adaptation starring Chris Pratt. It's an action thriller. It's got some politics thrown into the mix. It's a revenge story. And I ate the entire thing up. And this is one of those shows where I started watching it and got hooked. And even though I'm an old man in my 40s, was like binging it till like two, three in the morning because I just had to watch one more episode to see what was going to happen next. How is he going to get out of this mess that they created? And it just feels like a lot of kind of these books that in the past would be adapted into a two hour movie work really well when adapted into these like eight episode TV shows where they really can adapt all the material in the book and even expand upon things. So you buy into the world, feel just how evil the bad guys are. It's also nice to see kind of Chris Pratt take on a role where he doesn't at all play into his comedic side, his goofy side, because the way that it's designed, that it is about this list, it sets up a series of villains that you want to see taken out. Every other episode is this big payoff of another major contributor to the conspiracy gets taken out. It was very cool, very much my kind of thing. I had a ton of fun with it. Even though sometimes you weren't supposed to because he was like torturing people to death. I had fun with it. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your picks down below in the comment section. Remember, I didn't watch every great show that came out this season. So if there's a show you think I would like that I haven't watched, let me know about it down below in the comment section. Also, since we are at the end of the year, it is time for end of the year lists. I already did a couple of them already with like my, uh, 2022 comic book movies ranked, but all over this next week, it's end of the year list. Be on the lookout for all of that. And you can check out whichever ones have been posted up in this playlist. And if you're in the future, there's going to be a bunch of them in there. In third place, House of the Dragon. And I'm a newer Game of Thrones fan. I didn't watch the show during its original run. I ended up watching through the entire series during the COVID era when there wasn't a ton of new stuff coming out. And I finally understood why people fell in love with the show in the first place and also why they became very angry during season eight. I wasn't particularly excited about this show because of how bad season eight got. And then the trailers didn't really sell me on what the hook was for the show. But almost immediately, 
during the first episode, I started to see like, oh, okay, this is, okay, this is getting back to that compelling nature of the good seasons of Game of Thrones with just complex characters, layered storytelling, where you have all these different motivations and you start to immediately see the conflict of brewing inside of everything taking place. And then as the season went along, I felt it just kind of got better and better and captured what worked about the good era of Game of Thrones while not feeling like it was copying it. And a big part of that is a couple of things. The first one is it's focused on a lot fewer people and in fewer locations. So each episode, it feels like you really go in depth with them. The other one is because there would be huge time gaps between episodes you really felt like you were seeing this whole era take place throughout the span of the season. Such an in-depth backstory about where everyone's coming from, where this complexity is coming from, and seeing all the great and awful things about the characters and being twisty and turny all along the way. And then it, like the great seasons of Game of Thrones, ends on just this dramatic twist turn that takes place we're like oh that's not gonna go well and i can't wait until we get more of this show. our runner-up andor the star wars series based off the character absolutely nobody wanted a series about turned out to be some of the best star wars that we've ever gotten by instead of playing into the elements that most of star wars plays into the jedi all of the creatures fantasy, hero's journey, instead of kind of that more traditional elements of Star Wars stories, it dives into kind of the more political ground level of the rebellion. What was it actually like for normal people during the imperial rule? And how did that lead to the events that we saw in the original series? And in doing so, by making a show that's not catering to the broadest audience, it's targeting an older audience, a more mature audience that's more interested in kind of a drama, a slow burn. It just gave us something new and different in the world of Star Wars that complements everything that we've had before so well. Let's really see all of this from a different perspective. Let's see the dark side of the rebellion. And the characters were complex. The dialogue was interesting. And they did a, just a great job of just doing these couple of setup episodes and then a big explosive payoff episode where the way the season plays out, it's kind of like four TV movies strung together. I loved it. And this is exactly what Star Wars needed after a couple of real lackluster shows. But really coming in at number one is Better Call Saul. Of course, Breaking Bad is one of the greatest TV shows of all time. And I would argue Better Call Saul is right there with it. And the show that kind of closed out the Breaking Bad verse or the season that closed out the Breaking Bad universe did a fantastic job of just closing out Jimmy's arc while also kind of giving a book into this universe as a whole. In a lot of ways, I find Better Call Saul to be more rewatchable or more just watchable in general with much more likable characters that you can root for than Breaking Bad. And so just ended on a great note of finding ways in the first half of the season to use our knowledge of who survives and who shows up in Breaking Bad against the audience where you're kind of like, wait a minute, I know they're not going to make it into Breaking Bad. So what exactly is going to take place here? Really clever, smart stuff. And then in the final episode, it just does a great job of finishing Jimmy's arc in a way that feels satisfying, that feels earned, that has a big victory for him while also feeling like he's appropriately paying the cost of everything that he's done with all of his shenanigans. And if you've seen my reviews of this final season of Better Call Saul, you know I had some pretty significant criticisms about a couple of episodes towards the end there. That doesn't change the fact that at the end of the day, I just think they did an amazing job of closing out the season and, or show the universe in such a satisfying way. So despite even having issues with the season as a whole, 
it still comes in at number one. Remember, there is a companion video to this over on my Patreon page with my most disappointing shows of 2022. The link is down below in the description. Join at any level to unlock that video and hundreds more. For under $23, you can get all the exclusives in 2023. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.